It has made a return for everybody wanting a very, very, very small, lightweight Linux. Once again, it has returned. Of course, we are talking about the D word, small Linux. And I thought about what exactly to do because we do try to keep our channel as family friendly as possible. I'm just going to refer to it as darn small Linux. Of course, you guys all know what we are talking about. The wonderful Linux distribution that historically used to run on a 50 megabyte drive. Now, he explains a little bit of his rationale here, indicating that he's still trying to get a Linux distribution to run under 700 megabytes, and he did it. He created an evil download that is 666 megabytes in size. So I uh, did battle with the devil, and I downloaded it and had a look. And so we are going to look. Of course, that's all tongue-in-cheek, but the download size is 666 megabytes, which is very nice because, hey, you can download it uh, on a pretty small amount. Now, it is designed, it is effectively stripped out of Antiques Linux, which he said was the best small Linux that he could, and then he stripped some things down further, explaining that he kept as much of, M of Antiques Linux as possible in there, but if there is something broken you were missing, he says it's probably his fault. He also said that he did take out a lot of languages, man pages, and things like that, but he provided a convenient script to add all of those back in so that somebody that does need those resources can install it whether you're on a live key or once you have it installed on a system, but that allowed him to still get the installation disk size able to fit on a single CD-ROM. And that's what his goal was specifically to deal with low spec x86 computers. And that really was his goal. We do have a variety of web browsers. Some of them are text-based, and we do have some fully HTML5 compatible ones, although I don't think JavaScript works with them uh, based on what I did looking at my own sites. Uh, just the bootstrap elements aren't working correctly, of course. And then we have uh, AbbaWord for word processing, Gnumeric for spreadsheets. We have uh, Syflead for an email client, and Zathra for PDF viewers. We have uh, MPV for... Um, video and audio, which also can work as a terminal application as well. We have XS, XMMS for an audio player, and then we have a few other applications out of the box. We do have a lot of terminal-based applications. Now, this is going to be a limitation of me showing the uh, the build. I'll go ahead and boot into it, show you some of the basic features. I am not an expert on the terminal-based features. You might check out DistroTube's videos. He probably has a lot of these, being that he does a lot of terminal training in his videos. So have a look over there. Uh, you know, I've never used MUT before. Um, CDW, terminal-based uh, CD burner. That's cool. Uh, HTOP, I'm familiar with that one. I think I've actually seen the weather app before as well. We have both Vim and Nano enabled. So we have a variety of different things as terminal tools as well. I won't be able to show you all of those. They're just tools that I'm not particularly familiar with. But uh, the goal of it, he explains down here, is to pack as much of a usable desktop image in a small enough image to fit on a single CD with a hard limit of 700 megabytes. And so it's meant to service older computers, but still be usable as a system, which was a big challenge because the kernel itself is getting huge. Everything basically out there is, is kind of getting huge. And so that's really what he had to do. In 20, uh, 2002, this was 50 megabytes. Now it's uh, 666, like I said. And uh, so it's just under 700. He had to do some workable things like he cut down the English, uh, the languages down to U.S. English, uh, British English, Canadian English, and Australian English. And he stripped out source codes and many manu pa uh, man pages and documentation out. But as said, he has a download script allowing you to restore those features for all of the missing files. So... He says, uh, unlike the original, this version has apt fully enabled. So if you're familiar with the apt applications, uh, you can go ahead and install anything else that you want once you have this guy installed. And on the basic install, it runs on 83 megabytes. <laughs> that was what I got booting up HTOP after playing around with it. So they do say here that it comes from Antics Linux. Uh, so Antics, of course, is a uh, sister distribution to MX Linux. MX is one of my favorites on a recommended list. 
We did have we did have a little bit of controversy over Antix Linux in that one of the developer previews still had some some links in there that some people would consider inappropriate. Um, and I just said, you know, I just don't want any types of links like these inside of any Linux distribution unless it's specifically geared towards something like that. Example, if you have a, a Christian distribution, I have no problem with Christian stuff prepackaged, but if you're supposed to be a general distribution, I would certainly have a problem with Christian stuff prepackaged. Uh, and that's really the, the way I would go. But it does appear that that was not intended to be in the distribution itself. It looks as though that that got put in there. It's just part of a developer uh, build. And we were looking at a developer snapshot or an alpha or beta build. I forget exactly what it was. It was a long, long time ago. But what was nice about Antics is it gets the size very small. It drops system D, and I believe it goes for for sysv, if I remember correctly. And so you had a way of getting a very small bootable system. And so he stripped some of that down a little bit further. So, of course, he's crediting Debian and Antics. We have Togglebox for VPS hosting. We have uh, Gpedal at DeviantArt for wallpaper and then... A few other things. Of course, you can have a look over at the forums, which is right now active with people experimenting with this, which is still an alpha build, just to be aware. This is not a full development build yet. It is an alpha build. Um, I will note I did I was not able to install VirtualBox guest editions, um, bit rates or something. I'm not sure. Uh, maybe that's something that will get resolved. Mostly I couldn't get a good perfectly usable screen resolution. I found some that were acceptable though. You can of course support the project if you are into doing that. They have a Venmo link and they have subscription feeds through PayPal. You can support over there. You can do it one time or you can write them a check if you want to do any of that. So of course, if you are uh, into supporting the Linux distributions you're using, please go ahead and do that. That will help keep Linux distributions growing. He does have, for historical reasons, the old DSL page. So you can have a look over here and see what it looks like, uh, how it looked long time ago, of course, with that good old fashioned resolution from back then. Remember when a website that size fit our whole screen? Kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to jump on over into the virtual machine and we'll go ahead and talk about how my virtual machine setup is and uh, do that once we get there. All right, so over here on the login screen, we you can see we have a, a number of different session types, which you can just click F1 to cycle through the different session types, various window managers and things like that. So we have a minimal Fluxbox, Fluxbox, ZZZJWIN, minimal JWIN. So... You have a number of these. I'm just going to land on whichever one I land on. I'm not particularly fluent in any of those as well. Um, and let's go ahead and get logged in here. It was uh, DSL. There you go. <laughs> STL. That's me. To our super secret password. Definitely not one, two, three. And here we'll get loaded in here. And you can see that we have, um, you, you have a variety of uh, different desktops available over here. So if you want to jump onto any other desktop. You can go ahead and pull that up from the menu. And the first thing we're actually going to do is let's go ahead and grab ourselves a better screen resolution. So it's under session here and you can set your screen resolution. And when you go to pull this out, you'll notice, uh, of course, I want 1080p. So that's not an option that we have. So I found the one that works best on my end is, I think this one works best for me. So it gets us a pretty full screen. So there we have it. And here's what we have as our desktop space. Of course, you can right click for uh, anywhere on the desktop. We can get our terminal, file manager, web browser, editor. And then here's the terminal application. So we have two terminal based browsers. Here's a few different games that we have. Here's some applications. And of course, these are all the various terminal applications. So uh, let's go ahead and have a brief look at HTOP here. You can see we're running on 84 megabytes. And um, overall, you know, this guy's running great. Of course, my machine here has roughly four gig given to it. And there's not a lot going on here. So that's actually pretty cool. So we'll go ahead and quit out of that. And you can have a look at the other applications that we have. Here's your other applications. So the other ones, these are the terminal-based ones. And then over here, we have just the other applications. So we have our file search, our leaf pad. Here's your distro tools. Specifically, we have our login manager, live USB kernel updater, Wi-Fi switcher. There's a couple of games. So here's a couple of games just prepackaged in over here. I'm not familiar with any of these games. 
So uh, let's have a look. I have no idea what this is. What is this? What am I doing? Oh, okay. I think that there's some limitations with the virtual machine is interfering with the uh, the mouse there. And actually, that's kind of killing my whole my whole vibe here. I got to get out of this thing. Get out of this game. Get out of this game. It has captured my screen cursor. All right, I got out. <laughs> I don't know how I got out. I got out. There we are. Uh, <laughs> be careful. Don't go in the applications. You don't know. You might get stuck in a game. Uh, wasn't there a, uh, a are you afraid of the dark about that? You start playing a game and you're stuck in there forever? Or was that based on Jumanji? I don't know. I guess Jumanji is what's the same. Here's your uh, GFTP. Here's your links. Here's your email client. Um, you have firewall. Here's your multimedia. So we have a, enough applications that we do feel like we have a solid system out of the box. You have your choice of desktops. So you can go ahead and choose whichever ones you might like to use. And of course, you can manage everything just with a right click over here. Here's your, um, uh, your various configurations. And as I said before, I'm not a huge, um, uh, I'm not knowledgeable at all on the window managers. It's just not something I've taken the time to learn, uh, nor the terminal applications. I pretty much live inside the GUI most of the time. Uh, which is just fine and acceptable. So you'll see me uh, uh, fumble through a few things here. But you'll see that you actually have uh, enough tools here that it feels like a complete enough system that if you are trying to get some good functional work done on a desktop environment, you can go ahead and do that. Of course, you can always go into, you, into here and uh, you should be able to run a sudo apt update sudo apt upgrade. And this should work for you. So in the event that you need to bring back those man pages, you want to do some updates, anything like that, you can go ahead and do that. You can see it's working this off of Bookworm. Let me see if we can find one more thing in here I was looking for. Okay, so you can see we have a full app here. So if I want to, I can go ahead and upgrade the system. And it tells me that, um, let's see, we can change the in, uh, let's see, in release from 12.2 to 12.4. So we can go ahead and do this. This is going to download 89 megabytes with a increased additional disk space of 13.9 megabytes. Well, that's actually working. Let's go ahead and have a look at our file manager here. And you can see that we are only running 6 gigabytes of data space. 20 gigabytes is the total disk space. 14 gigabytes of that is free. So definitely it does not take a lot of disk space. Now, one of the things I was actually looking for here is I was looking for that script. I'm sure he has a reference to it somewhere, but he has a script that allows you to reinstall man, man pages and things like that. And I was not able to see that anywhere obvious in the system itself. So that script might be, he might have it linked on the forum. I didn't see it anywhere. I wasn't really looking for it until uh, just recently here. But uh, it'd be nice if I could find where that script is. And it might be buried somewhere inside the menus. But I did look for it everywhere. Didn't see it. And here's our control center. I did check the control center if it was something in there, like under maintenance or something. And it's not there. Nothing under drivers. Here's your hardware options. Here's your disk options. So we can make a live USB. We can partition image. We can configure auto mounts. So if you want to plug something in and automatically have it mount, you can go ahead and do that. And then under session, of course, we went in there to set our screen, uh, screen resolution. Here's your grub boot image, login manager, network shares, and then various network uh, configurations, firewall items. And so here's what you have as far as your, um, here's your startup stuff. All right. And then here's your package manager. Let's see what we have as far as our package manager in this guy. Oh, this one, keep current, there we are. Not seeing the package manager booting up. Let's uh, test if that's possibly because we are running updates, though. We'll go ahead and keep that there. So I'm noticing after running the updates, you can see it's actually installing and doing a lot of language updates here. So that's actually something I did not expect 
with them saying that it did not have many languages. I don't know if the running the update to Debian forced the addition of all these languages or not, but it is configuring a lot of other languages here. So we're going to go ahead and let that finish doing its thing. All right, so it's done doing its updates. Let's go ahead and uh, leave that behind there. And let's see if, uh, yeah, I cannot, they, they do have the manage packages option in there to have a look at in your control center, but I'm not actually seeing anything uh, active there. Let's go ahead and check the basic applications and see if we can uh, see that. Yeah, it looks as though they might have taken out the the uh, GUI package manager that comes with antics, but it still is remaining in the uh, in the uh, control center for some reason. So that looks like it might be a little bug there. So there is uh, DSL or darn small Linux. So uh, you can come over here. You can play with a variety of different uh, themes, styles, uh, desktop, various lightweight window managers, terminal applications, all sorts of things. All this set up for a small computer build, which is, you know, less than 700 megabytes, still available on a um, uh, on a individual uh, CD-ROM. So if you still have old computers floating around that you want to put something on to make them somewhat usable, maybe a tinkering machine or something, this is a good way to do it. It is up to date. It is still secure. You can put that thing on the Internet. And overall, neat little project. It's personally, obviously, not my forte as I don't do as much in the terminal. I do a lot more in the GUI. That's per my personal preference, of course. There's nothing right or wrong about that. Uh, so it's not my, I'm not the target audience, but I can see a number of my uh, supporters and followers are going to be very interested in this. So uh, it makes a very nice return and uh, best of luck to the project. And we will keep an eye on it when it maybe when it officially releases, we'll have another brief look at it just to see what it looks like. With that guys, thank you for watching. You can support the channel over on Patreon, T-O-M-M, -M, or Locals or Subscribestar, both at Switched to Linux. If you wanna help support the channel, you can have a look over at those places as well. With that, thank you for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.